next lesson. Today we're going to be talking about meiosis. As I had mentioned today, a big thing to understand about meiosis is the fact that you understand haploid, diploid, homologous chromosomes, things like that, because meiosis plays on the whole idea of it's going to start in one type, but it will end as another. So you have to know where that transition happens, and it all comes down to understanding homologous chromosomes. Um, so here's as a review. Look at this cell. Identify are we in a haploid or diploid state. I didn't throw the neither in, um, but this is... Did you say diploid? If you did, you're wrong. It's haploid. You're looking for that infamous question, does the homologous chromosome, is it in the same cell? So you look at this one, the homologous chromosome is not present. If it were, it would be the same size but the orange variety. Here, another one, not the same size as that. So there are three non-homologous chromosomes in this. So therefore, this is a haploid cell. And I then said, well, what number is it? The haploid number for this organism would have been three. If I did make it that diploid, then I would have to create the orange version, the purple version of this, and the orange version of this chromosome. So therefore, the number would have gone up to six. Next one, let's see if you learn from your mistake. Oh, here they're non-replicated. Doesn't have anything to do with haploid diploid. But what is this one? All right, it's yes. Yes, it's present. Yes, it's present. Three yeses, and that's a diploid cell. So the diploid here, the number is one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six non-replicated chromosomes inside this cell. So the diploid number equals six. The haploid number equals three. Just a little review. So today, uh, I want to go through the next process that is in your, for your test. It's a process known as meiosis. Looks very similar to the word mitosis. Some students will get it confused. Goes down to the role, the purpose of this process. The purpose of meiosis is to produce gametes. Other words for gametes are sex cells. Uh, they could be either from their sperm or eggs. So it's the process of making sperm and eggs for a human, even for other organisms, whatever their sex cell is, that's the process they'll go through meiosis. Anything that goes through sexual reproduction will go through meiosis. So let's get into the process. We now know why. Um, we had talked today also about why is it important to go from a number that is haploid from diploid. Why do humans have only 23 chromosomes in their sperm and 23 chromosomes in their eggs? We had talked about that today, saying how you want to make sure that the number goes back up to 46. You don't want sex cells to have the same number of chromosomes because every time that they would meet with their opposite um, type of cell, the numbers would rise and then generations would increase and increase. So it keeps it consistent so that we alternate between 23 in our sex cells and 46 in our body cells. Understanding mitosis will make this process really easy. It starts with the first process. It still goes through a round of interphase. So you should have a picture of interphase in your notes. So here we have the, new, or the, the cell membrane. During interphase, we have its chromatin. So the colors I'm going to choose are, again, I'll choose blue and hot pink. During interphase, it's chromatin. So there. You can't even tell if it's haploid or diploid at this point because it's in chromatin form. The centrioles are there. They have to replicate. So there's my first centriole. And what it will do, it's going to replicate similar to interphase of mitosis. Looks the same. Um, during the process, it's going to grow. It'll also go through synthesis once again. So I'm going to double the amount. I'll go back up here. Not really going to see that on a piece of paper, but the idea that it will double. I just went through the S phase. I made all the chromatin basically replicated. So it will turn it into, as we talked about, the replicated chromosomes when it condenses. At this point, it's not condensed, so you can't see those X's. Interphase, same thing. So I'm, that's all that really happens. It's very quick and easy. Um, let's go into now. Meiosis is actually a two-part process. If you compare it to mitosis, Mitosis goes from one cell to two cells. 
meiosis does this. You start with one cell, and we are going to turn it into four cells. Today's lesson is only going to focus on the first half, which is called meiosis one. I bet you can guess what the second part is called, because you're smart. We're not going to talk about that today, though. We're going to focus on meiosis one. So when we go through this, it's actually two rounds of those prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So they have to differentiate. They'll put a Roman numeral after it. So you have to be very careful when you write answers to make sure the Roman numeral follows it. The first one we're going to focus on will then be prophase, making sure to identify it's the first round of prophase. So there's the cell. Similar things happen in prophase 1 of meiosis. You've got your nuclear membrane. It's breaking down. Your centrioles are moving to the opposite poles as one. Here's a major difference, though. The way the chromatin condenses, it's going to find homologous match and line up right next to it. Mitosis, they could have been anywhere. It didn't really matter if you even look at your notes. Look at prophase of mitosis. The homologous chromosomes are scattered. During prophase one, they are going to stay next to one another. So I'm going to do the pink and blue. So here is my blue. I'm going to draw, there's my replicated chromosome for blue. The pink version, which is in this, is going to line up right next to it. Then I'll do maybe a medium version and a small version. I'll go back to the hot pink. They, this looks completely different. You didn't focus that much effort in mitosis, but this is what happens in meiosis one. Homologous chromosomes pair together. It's actually given a word synapsis or synapse. The homologous chromosomes pair together. This is given now a new term. A pair of homologous chromosomes in replicated state that have paired together via synapsis is called a tetrad. So it com it's composed of either two replicated homologous chromosomes or one, two, three, four sister chromatids. Very rarely do you, again, talk about things in language of sister chromatids. This is a tetrad. Here's a tetrad. Here's a tetrad. Major thing that happens in prophase one is a process called crossing over. Crossing over is an exchange of DNA between homologous chromosomes. So you can write that, crossing over. It's an exchange of DNA between homologous chromosomes. I'm not going to write it, you can rewind it and hear it again if you need to. So to show crossing over, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exchange pieces of these, not the whole piece of the sister chromatid, a small segment. So a small segment of this blue sister chromatid will actually detach and it will replace a segment on here which was pink. Sorry, I didn't change the blue. So now there's going to be a small blue segment here where the hot pink version go. It actually crossed over. So look it. You now have a segment of sister chromatid that is majority hot pink, a small segment that's blue. A large segment that's blue, a small segment that is hot pink. That's crossing over. And what crossing over does for us is it adds diversity in DNA. The better the diversity of a DNA genome or the amount of DNA you have, the better it is for a species to survive. This is going to add some diversity. Notice now we have four sister chromatids. None of them look alike. If crossing over didn't occur, then two sister chromatids would be identical, and these two would be identical. You basically increase your diversity in half, or you, you doubled it. Crossing over occurs, big thing happens in prophase one. So now we're going to move on to the next thing, metaphase one. So what will happen in metaphase one, my centrioles are now completely at the poles. Spindle fibers have been formed. Now what line up at the equator is the tetrad. So what we have, I actually have another pair there. So what you get here, you're going to get a large blue, there's a medium blue, and there's my small blue. You're probably wondering, does it matter, the order, and the arrangement? It does not. 
They could have lined up any which way. It didn't have to be large, medium, small. It could have been any order. And the colors could have been the same as well. That's another word that we'll talk about in class. This arrangement is different every single time. And once again, it adds diversity. So the metaphase one, to describe this in words, my tetrads will line up at the equator. There's the equator, different than mitosis. Mitosis just replicated chromosomes lined up. We're still at a diploid state. Every homologous chromosome has a matching pair. Diploid, diploid, diploid. The diploid number for the cell is six. The haploid would be three. That's metaphase one. Meta one. That's all that happens. The next thing. Anaphase one. The tetrads will be pulled apart. So draw the split in half. So if I go back here and I say, all right, my large blue, so now my large blue is going to be separated from its homologous replicated match down here. So now they're separated. So then my blue medium goes down here, my small blue. Up here, my medium pink, my small pink. My tetrad has been pulled apart, so the homologous replicated chromosomes are separated from one another. I'm going to stop right there because I think I'm kind of getting towards the 15. I'm going to pause. I might have to do a second part just to finish up. Telophase 1. All right, so hold on to that. Oh, i got plenty of time. It's only 12 minutes. Okay, so I will, I'm not going to pause on that. Anaphase 1, homologous chromosomes will separate from one another. They're now, there's the North Pole-ish, there's the South, they've been separated, they've been pulled apart by the spindle fibers. Still diploid. The last phase for today is going to be telophase 1, with a little bit of cytokinesis in there as well. So based on where my poles were happening, the poles were North and South. So there's my cleavage furrow. Centrial, centrial, telophase, my nucleus comes back, my nucleus comes back, cytokinesis is occurring, there's my, my cleavage furrow. So what's in this nucleus will be whatever was pulling pull towards the top. So that was my large replicated blue, down here was my medium replicated blue, and my small. The hot pink versions was the, the medium up here, the small, and this one was just the large. Notice I did not keep that crossing over. It'd be way too intricate and too detailed, but remember that there are pieces. If I did this, there's still a small piece of the hot pink on this one. There's still a piece of the blue on this one. Okay, I could do that. You can do it if you really have the patience to keep on falling and crossing over. But now look at the nucleus. When this fully forms, is this haploid or diploid? It's in a different cell. So therefore, this nucleus is going to be a haploid nucleus. It's no longer diploid. So even at this point, we ended meiosis 1, we are in a haploid state nucleus, which is completely different than what happened in mitosis. So I need you to basically understand what just happened there. So you can say telophase 1, your two nuclei form, the replicated chromosomes now are, the homologous have been completely separated, they're now within their own nuclei. So make sure you get that. For tomorrow, we're going to go through the second round of what happens to each one of these cells. It's got to do that second split. So hold that. See you tomorrow.